Howdy and welcome back to Metal Masker Fab Shop. My name is Matt and we're getting right back on the old blue goose behind me, which is my 1958 Apache I just picked up last week. We got it out of a field and it had been sitting for roughly 20 years drug it home, pulled it into the shop. We got this thing to finally bust off after a lot of trial and error. Unfortunately, this thing is not pulling in any gears and I've been kind of snooping around on this thing off camera and I did see there is an inspection cover on the bottom side of our transmission. So that is gonna be our first line of attack. Get this thing brought up in the air a little bit so we can slide underneath there and we're gonna get that inspection cover off and see what we got working with. Everybody's favorite noise in the entire universe. That's straight axle life, I reckon. All right, I'm gonna throw a chalk under those back wheels and we should be ready to go. Also, make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I do plan on cleaning this thing up and there's some nightmare fuel underneath this thing is all I'm gonna say. And a lot of people were very concerned about me getting HEPA virus or something from the cab. So we're going to get rid of all these mouse houses, raccoon turds, and all that stuff in this episode as well. So stick in here. So what I'm hoping for is we pull this dust cover off here and we just find a bunch of crud that a mouse or something is packed up inside this cover. And we can pull it off, maybe clean this thing out, and then... The clutch will start in, well, I guess disengaging because it's definitely holding us from going anywhere. So that's my hope and my plan. I don't know if it's going to work, but it sure beats trying to pull this whole transmission out. Figured we'd give this a shot first and we'll go from there. Cross your fingers. There's nothing still lurking up in here that's going to come out and say, hey, always cool seeing like old farm rigs and stuff because they're always well greased as this one is as well which is cool because I mean a lot of I don't think even newer vehicles have grease fittings they're just all pretty much it is what it is so we got two here and I vaguely looked this thing over so maybe we can start dropping this thing now Definitely a little mouse houseage in here. Yeah, we got a pretty good amount of stuff up in here. I don't know if it's enough to make this thing not engage, but man, it looks like there's crud packed up in that clutch, which is probably not gonna be very good. Well, I think I'm gonna put a respirator on just so I don't get any more comments on the HEPA virus. I'm going to blow this unit out real quick. I'm sure that's going to be a great time. Alright, time to get some PPEs on. Alrighty. Got my mask on and my face shield. Let's go get it. Oh, almost forgot my safety glasses. Yeah. <sighs> Making a good mess of the shop. See if I could get on this thing and spin it all. Ow, God! <laughs> Terrible idea. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's fun. And it found my finger. So let's do it again, why don't we? You can just feel that stuff packed up in there. Back to blowing. Oh, Lord. 
Barney. Well, we do have a ton of crud that just came out of that flywheel and clutch. Man, I'm gonna try to blow myself down real quick and I'll show you all the crud. I blew a little bit after I turned the camera off and every little bit that was packed up inside of that flywheel and pressure plate and everything is pretty much gone. Oh, good stuff. My hands clean here. Use some of these TKO wipes by the Sweet Patina. If you're anything like me and you don't have running water in your shop, these things are absolute lifesavers. Or if you're on a road trip per se and you break down on the side of the road because you're driving an old truck, these also come in very, very handy. But if you want to save yourself a little cash, use this code right up here and get yourself some. Save a little bit at discount or any of their other great products. We'll be using, I'm sure, some sweet patina sauce on this thing in the near future as well. So go check them out. Sparkly clean. You can see a ton, a ton of junk came out of this thing. It was all packed in that flywheel, clutch, everything. It was just jammed up in there. So right here, I've got a clutch out of the truck and what I was doing, I could fill up in here and all these little fingers it was just this was just packed in here so what i'm hoping is when we push that thing in and the fingers got depressed maybe some of that crud that was jammed up in here got packed up in here and wasn't allowing everything to release and it was just basically sitting there free spinning i don't know even if we got to go and pull this transmission and change clutch and everything that will at least get us a little closer to not having to deal with all that crud and the mouse houses and everything else so i'm gonna clean up my mess real quick and then we'll maybe get into that cab real quick and get a little bit of that cleaned out so tomorrow we can try to make this thing for a test rip there's a pretty good idea minus the little plastic case there of what came out of that clutch assembly that's a lot of junk. That could have definitely been our problem. All right. Now, down to the good stuff. We're obviously probably going to end up pressure washing this thing out. And like many people said in the comments on the last video, I should have done this from the word go. But I didn't. Oh, there's my glasses. <laughs> I've been looking for those all week. I don't remember that spider being there. I'm gonna try to start cleaning this floor up a little bit. I've got the old masculator on. <sighs> Where to even start? Finding the dustpan. Okay, I can get the dustpan, but I don't have... There it is. Just gonna start funneling some of this junk in here. And it is thick, lay it back up. Come on, this way. Go that way. It's like a full buffet for a dog right now. I wonder why dogs like to do that weird stuff, man. I think it's like the most disgusting stuff ever, and they're just like, yep. I'll take a double shot of that. Pretty sure there was like a feral child living in here the size of some of these turds, man. Pretty gnarly stuff. Oh, Lord. That one's got some substance to it. <laughs> this thing's basically a big litter box. I have to call this thing Fresh Step instead of Blue Goose. All the daggone poop it's got in this thing. There's first load. Nothing too terrible yet on like floor surprises. It's rusty. Dare I say it's crappy? <laughs> no, it ain't too bad. I've seen a lot worse. As far as rust goes, this is definitely the poopiest truck I've ever been around in my life, though. <laughs> oh, it's got me. Oh, that stuff was brittle. Yeah, we got a little bit of cab rot going over here. Our gas pedalage is 
gone, unfortunately. I plan at the end of the week to go to the Frog Follies down in Evansville, Indiana. Hoping to possibly get a door for this thing. That way we ain't still Jeep lifing. And load number two on the driver's side. I will say though, by not having a door on the driver's side has made for some opportune camera angles. Oh, there's the keys. I'm kidding. Take our old RC Cola can here. That's our brake cover. Oh. oh man, that's a bummer. That was the owner's manual for the truck. That would have been really cool to have. Oh, she gone now. Lord, that's got to be a carcass of some sort. Huh. Got a little gutter material here. Might hang on to that for some rocker action. Well, we got some spark plugs here. You gotta be a little bit meticulous with all this. Don't wanna sweep up too many good finds. We still got a uh, floorboard over, or not floorboard, but a floor mat over here on this side. Well, what's left of one? Scoop number two. Feel like the owl on the Tootsie Row commercials, or Tootsie Pop. How many scoops does it take to get to the bottom of an Apache floor? A one, a two, mirror, yep. All right, load three. Yeah, our old floor panel here. Holy crap. <laughs> it's still painted there. That's pretty cool. Still had the door on it, man. It's in pretty good shape. Just that driver's side, it got exposed to the elements probably all them years and uh, got a little rotten. Got a little, we're a little softer on that body mount. That ain't too bad of a fix, don't look like though. Oh, we still got all the junk in the seat and under it. But we're getting pretty dang close to being clean over here. Sweep up these remnants here and we'll get the vacuum cleaner out and we'll probably call that good until we get this seat out. saying there's still a little bit of paint on this side of the truck and you can see that why the truck gets his name blue goose it's actually blue underneath all of that surface rust which if you look right here I kind of uh, did a little spot just a little test spot I kind of rubbed around on this so kind of optimistic this whole roof and even a lot of this might actually come off I mean a lot of that surface rust might come off and we might be left with our old blue goose once again but I'm really debating on tonight it's getting late but I would like to get that seat off so tomorrow when we go up there to pressure wash this cab out we're not getting that seat in the way we could take the seat snip her back here with uh, that surprise that's underneath there yeah let's try to do that real quick all right i'm gonna try to get these front two out first oh there we go well it came part of the way out then it gave up on us i probably should have uh tightened that a little bit and maybe it would have went back and forth but i didn't i didn't do that I'm gonna try to get these front four out and then hopefully we can slide this seat forward if it still works and then hopefully we can get an extension down there because I really don't want to be reaching up underneath there 
Unless I absolutely have to. Might be pulling back a nub. All right, we got one halfway out and we got one all the way out. Move to the other side and then I'll see if I can get this thing forward. All right, both of those came out with no issue. but it appears the other side is not. I have used about every bit of penetrant that I have in out here. I'm literally just like spraying fumes on everything. <laughs> Trying to get this stuff freed up. Found some good old WD. Give it a good dousing right here. Because we might end up actually getting this seat rebuilt. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, man. <sighs> well, I got this side far enough. It needs to go a little further down. Oh, man. This side moves way easier. Yeah, that'll be plenty of room to get in here to get these other two seat bolts now sweet and to think we's about to give up and go inside maybe we should have get on there what the heck So far we got five out of eight that have came out. That's pretty good odds so far. Well, there we go. Two more to go and this old seat is ours. Already see a pair of channel locks and I'm just trying not to reach in there and grab a hold of them because it's covered in poopy. A lot of this stuff is though. down and hit me in the leg I'm a little gun shy okay you ain't gotta tell me oh here we go <clears throat> all right so the first thing we got us a little tire iron there plenty of rope we could do whatever we needed to sort of spring or something looks like a big electrode for a welder I uh, got that four-way and then I said right there, there's a pair of channel locks. Another screwdriver right there. And we got the freaking Mouse House 5000 right there. That thing was the Marriott, you know what I mean? So we need to tie into that and see if we got anything in there. And then we can get the rest of this out. Then I think this cab's going to be pretty clean for the most part. Old Blue Goose making a comeback. I'm down to my last natural glove. That's unfortunate, but just so happens. There's another one here. I'm just kidding. I'm not doing that. Got those channel locks I was talking about. Clean them units up. And we got us another screwdriver. That's the second one I found. There's the first unit. Looks like a lot of, uh oh, pack of Paul Malls right there. Famous cigarette. Agon didn't even get one in the pack. No PVR in this truck either. All right, looks like we got just tools I said. Nothing too exciting back here, but it's gonna be clean, so that's a big deal. heard that dang steering wheel start squeaking. I thought it was a dang mouse in here. That's good stuff right there. 
switch over to a separate bag. The trash can's getting so full. I don't know if I'm even gonna be able to get that thing out. It's gonna be a heavy freaking trash bag. There's a lot of crap behind this fuel tank. I need to pull it out too. While we're here, as my buddy Jeremy would say, <laughs> there ain't a crap load of stuff down there behind there. I think we get that vacuum in here. It'd be good enough for today. Got another glove nest. Ah, ah. What we got here? I thought that was a pee jug for a second. Got another old work glove. Man, I don't really want to reach my hand down in there too much. We got night one in the books. I think we made a pretty good amount of progress. I'm excited to see tomorrow. Hopefully, fire this thing up, throw her in the gear. We can be on our way. On our way up to the house because this thing desperately needs some cleaning. With the seat all the way out and everything, it's all cleaned up. As you can see, we got that four way, some other tools over there. All in all, I mean, you got some rust up here in the kick panels and everything, kind of on both sides. You can see some daylight over there, but I mean, that's to be expected on these old trucks. I didn't exactly come into this truck thinking that I was getting, you know, a rust-free West Coast truck or nothing, so that's not too bad. All the trucks that I have need rust repair. That's just the name of the game in the area that I'm in, so I don't stress about it anymore. If anything, it's good practice for me. <laughs> ADHD got to me. Let's do one more thing. I just want to see if we can't shine this old gauge cluster up real quick. I've been wanting to see this thing since I've got it home. What better time than now? Man, that is cool as heck. Hillary even commented on that the other day, how cool it looked. It's just got a super good look, that V right there. 100 mile an hour, man. I don't know about all that. But now, at least when we fire this thing up, we can kind of see what's working on it. I did see the other night when we fired it up, the gas gauge was going from empty to full. I don't know if that's accurate. You just can't beat old school styling. You can't beat it with a stick. I mean, you could, but it wouldn't make much sense. All right, so it is the next day. We're out here again, obviously. And we're gonna see if this thing will in fact pull now. I mean, I'm still kind of skeptical. I know we got a bunch of crap out of that clutch, but I'm not 100% sold that that is gonna do the trick. But I am gonna give it a shot. See if this thing will even fire up. I haven't tried firing it anymore since we did in the last episode. Uh oh, throttle just broke. So I need to fix that real quick. <laughs> Alrighty, I added that little safety pin there because I don't know what happened, but the mechanism that was factory apparently gave up. So that thing can't pull out now. That's good enough for now. All right, here we go. I got my makeshift seat in here. Hopefully it holds me. Got power. Here we go. Well, 
we don't have any gear still i'm saying that clutch is just smoked and i seen a comment somebody saying it's popping probably because we got a valve sticking and that's very possible too well positive news i seen the oil pressure gauge was up i don't know exactly what all these little bars are but we were over halfway so we do have oil pressure and it looked like we were charging so i guess it's a little winds that's a bummer though man i was hoping that was going to take care of our clutch issue all right i'm just going to opt to push this thing out and then we're going to pull up the house i want to go ahead and pressure wash this thing it's nasty as heck anyway all right I don't know how far I'm going to roll, but I know I don't have brakes. Oh gosh, that's not good. Nope. Woo! First time I've heard the dually exhaust uh, from outside. Sounds pretty decent, actually. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She's just getting in it. She ain't. Uh-oh, we got it, I think. Yep. <laughs> oh, Lord, that's awesome. I do love that truck. And that woman's. She puts up with a lot of stupid stuff. <laughs> so I'm gonna get in this thing real quick and if you guys are scared of snakes at all you might want to look away <laughs> myself i am not a fan of snakes in the slightest so whenever i lifted this up and seen oh some snake skins under here i was not very impressed <laughs> Kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies just even touching this thing. <laughs> I'm a wimp when it comes to snakes. But I popped that thing open the other day, and that dang snake skin came popping up with it, and it about made me have a heart attack. You see the other little piece there, so popped that thing up the other day and about crapped on myself a little bit. But just trying to get the metal out of this thing. That way we don't blow anything down. <laughs> Good piece of belting or something here. Use that out around the shop. Maybe cut down on some weedage. And a snake! <laughs> uh oh, you'll never ever see me do that, so don't worry about it. Looks like the rest of this is just going to be some wood chips. Got a little bit more stringage. And can't forget our gutter, or what might be our rocker panel in the future. The last engine cleaning video I did, somebody recommended this heavy duty oven cleaner, so that's what I'm gonna coat this thing down with. Just pretty liberal with it, I guess. Need to probably get a bag for that. Distributor and coil, I don't know if it would hurt it really getting it wet i'm not gonna soak it down or nothing i'm just mainly going around it but i want to get this heavily coated here so we can come in and <coughs> spray it oh that's stuff's strong Woo! <laughs> maybe a will it run video for my pressure washer i haven't had my gas powered one fired up in a long time started that thing in like three years.
this thing real quick with some uh, So Fresh So Clean by Sweet Patina and also some Brillo pads. Just try to knock down some of this heavy rust real quick and potentially maybe bring that out right there. Can I help you? I don't care, baby. Can I? You want to? Yeah, what's my job? We'll get you one of those pads out of there. <laughs> Good job. Oh, moment of truth. See if that comes out at all. That name. Can't hardly make it out. You can see the Johnson City, Illinois really good. I don't know how extreme I'm gonna go right now. I'm redoing this whole truck. It's weird this thing goes from like green to blue right here. I don't know if there's something that was painted on this thing or what. I gotta go get the little one a bath. All right, so as you can tell, we've definitely ran out of daylight. I would like to get this truck back down to the shop because we need to make an assessment what we're gonna do with this transmission. We're either gonna A, have to pull it and see if that clutch assembly that I've got in the shop will work in this. B, we just pull it and I've thought about doing like an NV3500 five speed or a T5. Alrighty. Here we go. Put that thing in gear a little bit there on the way down and man it sounds like it's turning that engine over i just don't know i don't know what to do <sighs> but you've seen it start up and it obviously didn't go nowhere so it's a good tractor get this thing back in the garage hopefully it's just a straight shot from here Okay, so I think I've devised a little bit of a plan here. This is that carburetor that I was looking at the other day. We know the carburetor on this is leaking. I think that it needs a different carburetor. I was looking up carb kits and just rebuild kits, but I think this is gonna be perfect because it's got a little vacuum line here. This has the vacuum line. It's got the mixture screw and even our throttle is the same on this so i think we can retrofit this one in it looks like to be a little bit bigger carburetor so maybe it'll even run a little bit better the only thing is different is where the fuel is and i think i got a 90 to where we can make that work so let's get in on it and get her going Can we give it up for this little carburetor though? It uh, fired right up. Float didn't stick or nothing. I didn't hit the hammer on it or anything. It just performed. But I think it definitely needs to be cleaned out 
and I'll try to order a rebuild kit for it because I wouldn't mind running the one that comes on it. That's kind of cool. But these straight sixes with having the exhaust manifold right underneath the carburetor, that's about the last thing you want is a gas leak of any kind. Gasket don't look too bad. It's a little whelped up right there. I bet that's where we were leaking on it. I had to guess. See if we got another one over here real quick. Unfortunately, I did not have any luck finding a new gasket, so we're just rolling with the old one for now. And we'll keep an eye on it. A lot of our leakage was coming out around our bowl too. So, like I said, we'll just keep an eye on it whenever we fire this thing back up. Kind of see how it does. And as you can see, this gas line on like the newer style carburetors goes this way. So we're gonna have to do some bending and twisting on our fuel line. Unfortunately, I think our choke cable is completely froze up on the truck. I'm not even gonna hook it up currently. This is where we're gonna have to do some modifying to get this thing to work. So I'm thinking we'll put this in here like so, and then we'll have to snip this into here. And our gas line should work out pretty dang good. Now, hopefully we can just do a little bending here and finagling. Well, it's gonna kinda get in the way of what I was wanting to do next, which is take this valve cover off real quick just to look and see if we do, in fact, have any sticky valves. All right, looks like this thing just comes off with a big flathead screwdriver, which is pretty wild. Looks like we got four bolts. Hopefully we can get this off without messing the gasket up too bad but if it happens it happens it's not like this thing hasn't seen an oil leak or two in its day it doesn't look like <laughs> all right looks like we got away scotch-free really looks pretty good in here not bad All right, I'm gonna turn this thing over by hand a little bit and make sure I'm just gonna watch some of these valves. Make sure they're all coming up and doing the motion. Oh, <laughs> that thing's already pumping gas. That's a heck of a fuel pump, man. Let me get a little bottle to put that in so it goes into something, I guess. So, I'm not moving this dang truck right now. Like, it's rocking back and forth. So to me, the dang thing, <laughs> the clutch is grabbing. It has to be. That's what I don't get. I just, I don't know, man. It's so odd. See, I'm not doing anything but turning this fan straight up and the truck's wanting to back, go backwards. I think the valves could use to be tightened maybe a little bit on some of these, but I'm not gonna mess with that right now. We're starting to get some good compression out of this thing. All right, so I have been under the truck for the last 30 minutes to an hour tinkering with that clutch again because I just don't know when to quit. I think I'm just going to have to accept the fact that I think the clutch is just glazed over. I don't think we're going to be able to do anything with it as far as it still being inside the truck. So pretty unfortunate because I was really wanting to get that thing on a rip and drive it around a little. But I don't think it's going to happen. So... We can at least dial this thing in and get the engine running a little bit better. And that is exactly what we're going to do starting tomorrow. But I'm gassed. Tired? I'm sure you can tell. <laughs> Look like a crazy man, I'm sure. But we're making progress. I hate to be a downer, but that's just a bummer. It's like the last thing you want is to have to pull a transmission on a brand new truck. But... That thing got parked for a reason, probably. It could have been a clutch all along. We're gonna make a lemonade out of some lemons or something like that. Even if we gotta do a trans swap or something later on. All right, moment of truth. I guess we'll go ahead and try to fire this thing up off this new carburetor. See what we got. Fire in the hole, Layla. Watch out back here. Whew. 
battery is not very good. It's gonna take just a little bit to fill that carburetor up, I'm sure. I haven't pulled anything up yet. Pretty dang good. So we got some wheel spinach. I did clean the absolute heck out of this thing with some brake parts cleaner and blew it again. I'm gonna try to put this thing in gear and see what it does now. I think we just need a clutch, I don't know. get mad about that. I think sitting there idling, running pretty dang good. You can watch here, the oil pressure will go up and also our amps will go towards charging once we hit the gas here. Well, it just is not going to happen. I tried every little remedy I could think of, but we got a good heat cycle in on the engine. Things sit there and idled for a while. It definitely warmed up, but it never registered on the gauge, which it might not even have any water in it, so that probably would help. I would love to go ahead, throw a clutch in this, I think, maybe, and just get it running and driving the way it is right now, and maybe just cruise it like this. I don't know. And then, like I've said earlier I might do a deep dive and do like an actual bagged build and do it kind of like my 64 back here and have it laid out on the ground maybe something kind of like this maybe not to this extreme though have the Apache on air ride I'm kind of just building these things just to kind of have fun so if you guys have any kind of input I would highly recommend you leave it down in the comment section because I do read those and I try to reply to every single one that I possibly can. I would love to hear your opinion on what we should do with the Apache. So I brought in the A-Team 
Luke showed up too. I'll say I'm B or C <laughs> at this point. We're gonna try to fire this thing up. I'm just getting a couple more set of eyes real quick on the truck just to see what we got going on. I can actually pry on that pressure plate. Yeah. Can you see the clutch disc right there? Yep. Yeah, I can actually squeeze it. And it almost looks like maybe the, yeah, I don't think you should be able to do that there. You know what I mean? Squeeze it in together like that. So it's just not pressing it. It's probably like, like you said, kind of bound up with some rust or Either that or mouthpiece. Yeah, and you know, I don't know, unless the lining's wore down, you know, to where it's, the only time I've ever seen a clutch disc not, not grab from being wore out, uh -huh. the lining was almost all the way gone, you know what I mean? It just right. still looks kind of thick. Yeah, it didn't look bad. It looks like it's still kind of fibrous and yeah. everything. Can you push the clutch into that a couple times? Watch that milk crate. She's a little deteriorated too. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sitting on it. I'm just using my hand. I got you. There you go. It's like it just goes up against it and then it's like blah. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really smash it. Right. I just wonder first. Uh, you think there's more mouse house in there? Man, I don't know. You just got so much pressure on it that you got to draw that, the outside shell up with your bolts. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't. I mean, I'm not trying. I just, I've never messed with the clutch okay. at all. Usually, usually, like whenever you put it, when you're putting it together, mm -hmm. you know, you got your bolts around here on the shell. Yeah. On the pressure plate shell. You get them bolts started, that uh, that pressure plate, the plate part will go up against the clutch disc. Right. Before that gets up, and you got, and you got to pull it in with the bolts. Oh, okay. And, and that, and that creates your pressure mm. against your pressure, or your, against your clutch disc. I ain't no guarantee she fired up. Sinking in, she's already leaking gas. <laughs> Put it in uh, reverse and ease out on the plug. It don't matter. I get it. Out. Out. I guess the clutch is pretty much shot, but we've got a little challenge going. I guess Luke, he just voiced that he could get this thing out in 30 minutes. Well, I think I may be a liar. It's currently 820. Is we going to make a liar out of him? I think I made myself a liar because I didn't realize that this drive shaft is the way it is. I don't know how the hell this thing comes out. So we'll check back in with him here in a minute and see where he's at on that thing. It shouldn't. I think I got the key back. Oh, I'll get the battery disconnected too. Yeah, that'd be my life. Well, the good thing the clutch is out, so. <laughs> How you coming under here, Luke? I'm learning how this whole thing works. Yeah, that old school parking brake there. It's like a, basically like a drum brake kind of set up, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. And it all still works. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually knock it. I'll get back on there. Just a little bit over. I love how we're going at this like we're killing snakes right now. pull it straight back for now and then we'll have to slide off the jack and pull it out from underneath the truck here's this you can use that too can we just hit the starter i mean yeah you can bump it no just do it yeah you probably grab that fan brent hang on let me try it up here one more all right Oh, 
your fingers. And then there's your clutch pad. What's the verdict, boys? The clutch ain't great, but it should have grabbed. Yeah. Let's investigate this. It was a little longer than a half hour, but it didn't take too very long. You did great, Luke. That's right. We'll think you keep. We'll keep you for the next job. Okay. See that? The clutch ain't sticking past these low. These oh yeah. Faces here. It wore up. Well, I don't think so. I think what's going on is. See right down in here. Mm-hmm. I all think I think all that crap is holding. Man. It's not letting these come. See, these should be. These fingers should be up against this right. metal piece, and they should be angled up this way. If I could have blew that out more, it probably would have worked, wouldn't it? It's all. Yeah. It's I'll all. It's all jammed in. Yeah, you can tell just from this one how it's, it's yeah, like convex, are... and that was just <laughs> flat. All right, so we just kind of took some stuff out of the old clutch out here. Of way, Brian, it's pretty... We're snipping her back in, see what we got. That may be bigger than the other, taller than the other ones. Oh, it went in a little bit there. You want to lower this jack some? Because that's what we're on. Yeah. Yeah, that way we can, so we can rotate it. Yeah. yeah. Alright, right there's probably good, Luke. Gotta love it when a redneck plan comes together. Alright, I got this bottom one here started. Alright. Alrighty, Brent is putting the last bolt in the drive shaft, and I think we're gonna try to fire this thing up and see what we got. Luke, we did pretty good. That was a pretty quick little swap. A little longer than a half hour, but it'll be alright. But you just said to get it out. We got one out, put a new clutch in, and got it all back together now, so. Fingers crossed, we're gonna see some movage. Not gonna do a whole lot of driving because it is kind of nighttime out here right now. Brent's trying to talk me into driving this thing down the road though. I don't know if I want to do that with these tires, but hey. <laughs> Sounds like Luke's in. See you tomorrow, me and Luke are gonna test rip this thing after the frog follies. Highway. <laughs> Alrighty, we got our mobile fuel tank mounted up for temporary use. Just gotta hook our battery up and we're gonna get this old Apache out for its maiden voyage. Not going very far, we have really crappy tires and absolutely no brakes. And the throttle has a tendency to stick wide open, so hopefully this goes better than anticipated. I guess that corn fly is just chilling on my finger at this point. Let's get her going. Oh! Ho! Oh. Smashed the old finger already. Good start to the day so far. And we've already lost voltage. <laughs>
Alrighty, I think that's a great way to end the video. The old blue goose is back to flying. So, yeah, I'm pretty pumped. Huge shout out to Brent and Luke again for coming and giving me a hand last night to get this thing on the road, I guess, ish. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see done to this old truck. I don't know exactly where to go from here. If we start bagging it or if we just put it back the way it is right now and try to just get it roadworthy. But thanks again for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking in here and I'll see you on the next one.